Hi, welcome everyone. I want to let you know you're in the right space to join Operation Parent and Parents Against Vaping E-Cigarettes today for our uh, parent education webinar. So we are loading everybody in. Uh, we've got a lot of folks joining us today. I'm going to take you through a couple of ways uh, to participate during our program today as well. I uh, want to let you know it's just a beautiful day here uh, in Kentucky. It's a gorgeous afternoon and we are really honored that you would take time out of your busy schedule uh, and join us for this important webinar. As your host, let me just take a couple of minutes and walk you through the go-to webinar features. So you've got an orange grab tab up in your corner if you're joining us um, on a desktop. You can click on the orange tab and open your control panel all the way up. I uh, want to show you that there is a, a question feature there in the middle of the panel. So we are going to have a Q&A at the end of our uh, session today. And we would love for you to send uh, questions and comments privately there uh, to Amanda and I. There are three panels there. There's a light blue panel and also um, a middle panel that you can just send those questions and then as i said they'll come to us uh, privately we've got some awesome handouts uh, lined up for you today uh, thanks to parents against vaping e6 and uh, those handouts are a device a handout that actually shows you what current devices look like um, the title of that handout is device show and tell and that is available in English as well as Spanish. And then there's a second handout about how to speak to your child about vaping. That is also available today in English and Spanish. And we have provided you with a PDF of today's slides. So we did try for everyone who was registered uh, by yesterday early evening to send you those handouts in the email that you registered with. Uh, you're also welcome to download those handouts here with us today. All you have to do is uh, go to the handout section, tap on the particular handout that you want, uh, and download it for printing. You are going to receive uh, the recording of the webinar, certificate of attendance, and a link to the survey directly following the close of this webinar. So we are recording this presentation and it's going to be sent within 24 hours of completion of the webinar. So just make sure again that you check that uh, particular email that you registered for the webinar on. There's going to be a short survey at the end. Uh, it's going to come to you directly and it will take you only about two minutes to complete. Um, I can assure you that we utilize every word on that survey to continue improving uh, and growing that webinar program. Um, it blows me away how generous everybody is in taking some time to do that, and I hope that you'll um, continue to do that for us today as well. So um, now as we move into the webinar portion, the dangers of youth vaping and e-cigarettes, it's my honor to introduce you to Mimi and Dorian from PAVE. Um, they, we were introduced uh, to them, thankfully, through the Truth Initiative, and I am astonished by their powerful work that they are doing to educate parents, community members, grandparents about uh, e-cigs and vaping and the health consequences of that, um, as well as lobbying uh, to get uh, new laws in place uh, to protect our youth. And so it's just been a really honor to get to know them uh, through this whole process. And they have put a wonderful presentation for you um, to learn individually, as well as share it with other members um, in your community. So again, we're thankful that you joined us today and uh, we just can't wait to get started and learn, learn together this afternoon. Thank you so much. Hi, Michelle. Hi there. Of course. Um, thanks for having us. Uh, Dorian uh, is, is on as well. Um, I wanna welcome everyone and thank you again, as Michelle said, for taking the time. I hope you find this uh, presentation useful. Uh, I believe that there's some great takeaways for parents, public health experts, 
um, and anyone really who touches the lives of our kids. Um, my name is Mimi Boblick. I'm a founding partner of Parents Against Vaping. I'm joined today by Dorian Furman, who's one of the three co-founders of Parents Against Vaping. And um, again, we're really honored to be here. Just a couple of things. Um, Dorian and I, as well as our other founder, um, uh, the other one of the three founders, Meredith Berkman, are full-time volunteers. We're doing this because we really care about uh, about our youth. We have all had um, lived experience with our own kids and we don't want others to have to go through it. Um, also, it's important to know that um, the information that you'll see is based on the latest science, the latest research from our public health experts across the country. And so we continue to update as we go. Some of the things that you see today might not even be relevant six months from now, for example, some of the latest uh, devices, for example, which we'll show you. Um, and really the main goal of our work today and really our main goal of our work every day is to protect youth uh, from the dangers of vaping. And so this presentation is really about protecting youth. It is not really, we're not discussing adults and what adults do. So that's really important also to know. Um, so Doreen, if you want to walk us through, you know, what, what we hope to get out of this and, um, some of the background of PAVE, that would be great. Right, so um, this is our core educational presentation. After this presentation, you will be able to understand what uh, what e-cigarettes and vapes look like, what the dangers of vapes are, um, how the industry is targeting your kids, and then also know how to talk with your kids about vaping. Um, again, as Mimi said, we, we came into this um, kind of by accident. We um, we, we have had kids who have vaped, and um, but that's not how we got into it, surprisingly. We, um, my son, my co-founder Meredith's son, and my, uh, our other co-founder, Dina Alessi's son, both started ninth grade together. And um, a new school, we were new friends, and one day Meredith's son came home from school and said, Mom, there's a really strange anti-addiction talk at school today. And the presenter, uh, was talking about addiction and, and nicotine. And he said that while Juul does not want kids as customers, it is totally safe and about to get FDA approval. Um, after that presentation, my son and um, my co-founder's sons went over and spoke with him and said, well, what do you do if you have a, a, a friend who's addicted to nicotine? Uh, speaking about my son, by the way. And this presenter took out his jewel, he took it apart, he showed the boys how it worked, and he called it the iPhone of vapes. So needless to say, we were horrified. Um, when we did a little bit of research, we realized that the school had no idea. They had contracted with an outside anti-addiction group. And this group, hoping to get ahead of the vaping issue, which was reaching its height at that time, uh, reached out to Jewel, who at the time had a director of um, youth prevention and education on their website. Um, this later came out in Congress uh, at a trial um, where, which we testified at as well. And you know, so no one realized that Jewel was sending this person into our son's school to talk about Jewel. Um, so we got together, we decided we wanted to join the, um, basically the moms, the MAD, the Mothers Against Drunk Driving uh, vaping. and it didn't exist. This was six months before FDA and the Surgeon General would declare youth vaping an epidemic. Um, so we just did what moms do. You know, we started researching. We called our pediatricians. We called child psychiatrists that we knew. We called our legislators. And the more we found out, the more disturbed we were. So we started talking to like-minded parents and we got a movement going, basically. As I said, six months later, the Surgeon General and the FDA would declare youth vaping an epidemic. So today, we have parents and partners in states and cities around the country. We're helping pass laws to protect our kids from these predatory companies. We're going to talk about FDA in a little while and how FDA is going through an authorization process. Um, but until that happens, and it's not finished yet, by the way, we have to protect our kids locally. And that means um, either ending the sale of flavored tobacco products, which is shown to addict kids, preventing vape stores from opening within uh, proximity of a, a high school or a grammar school, and lots of other ways. So we work with people around the country and um, we've brought parents on to help us educate other parents and also to advocate um, for the end of selling these products to our kids and protecting our kids through stricter rules. 
Um, so today, youth vaping 2023, as Mimi said, it's changing constantly. The products are changing and the numbers are changing. You know, we'll see later that youth re that sorry, Juul really uh, created the youth vaping epidemic in 2017, 2018. Um, 2023, the numbers have gone down. So that is good news. Over 2.1 million teens are still vaping in middle school and high school, so actually younger than teens. Um, but that's down from 2.55 last year. However, what's a little concerning, I would say, um, is that tobacco use has increased among middle school students. And we're hearing on the ground that it's also increasing among grammar school students. But those numbers are not being tracked by anyone. So that's just the empirical data which is coming into us through schools, through teachers, and through parents. Um, so even though the numbers have come down, e-cigarette use among youth remains high. Now, not only does it remain high, but it remains frequent. So you'll see on this chart, more than 25% of the users will vape daily. Nearly 90% use flavored e-cigarette products. I mentioned earlier that we advocate to end the sale of all flavored tobacco products because in 2009, the government, the president ended the sale of all flavored cigarettes, except for menthol, which was a big mistake and we'll get into that later, because they understood that flavors in tobacco products will incite the kids to use it, prevent them from perceiving harm, and create greater addiction. So 90% use flavored e-cigarette products, and then more than 35% of the users vape 20 out of 30 days. Now that's more than just an occasional user, um, and those numbers are also concerning. More than one in 10 young adults, that comes from a different study from the CDC, are vaping. There are over three um, 30 million young adults in this country, that's over 3 million. So if you com if you combine those numbers, you know, we're looking at well over um, 5 million young, uh, you know, middle school to age 24 who are vaping. Of the 18 to 24, the age to buy tobacco products is 21. So you already have underage kids within that number. Yeah, and I think a lot of those are kids who started in high school and then they're addicted into college and they just continue it through college. Um, so you know, how did we get here? Uh, I think it's really worth mentioning, even though it is history now, that as Dorian said, Jewel really led the way in 2017 with this heavy social media push directed at not us, not adults, but really our kids. They were going right after our kids through this vaporized campaign. And if you look at these pictures, these are young kids. They're young models, uh, high midriff shirts. Um, you know, they're talking about uh, ex escaping parental texts. Um, these were targeted at our kids. They were handing out free samples at parties and, you know, with models and DJs, you know, making it look sexy. Um, and it worked. Uh, frankly, Juul had 75% of the market share at that time. And, you know, what this company and other companies know is that over 90% of all addiction, not just nicotine, but all addiction occurs before the age of 18. And so they know that they have to get our kids hooked because, they need a new lifetime customer, and that is our youth, right? That's this generation. So unfortunately, as you can see in this, um, this is a really heartbreaking statistic for me because, and I'm sure for parents and other public health professionals, um, they did such a great job from the 90s through uh, the 2000s in bringing down cigarette smoking um, through you know, great advertising, education, awareness campaigns. And so those smoking rates went from over 25% in the early 90s, 27%, to under 6% in, in 2019. But what happened in the blink of an eye when Juul and others uh, came out with these products, um, by 2019, we had 27% of youth vaping. So it's really heartbreaking um, to see this. And you know all that good work was just wiped away. Right, I would just add that those are the 2019 numbers. As I just said, the numbers have come down slightly, but also, um, I would add that those kids in 2019 who are vaping are now those young adults who are 21, 22, 23, who are being tracked by that other figure, one in 10 um, young adults who are vaping, and those numbers are skyrocketing. And again, they're not really being tracked. Yeah, and at that point, it's very hard to quit. Um, and you know, this is just a great example of same, you know, it's the same playbook as was used with cigarettes. It's just a slightly different product. You have doctors endorsing Camel. Now you have scientists endorsing products. 
you have the old marble man and the blue, you know, the, the new blue man. So it's just to show you these are the same companies with the same tactics and the same playbooks, um, you know, going after our kids. And many of them are owned. Many vaping companies are owned by big tobacco companies, not all of them. Uh, you know, and we see so much, I don't, you know, depends on where you live, but I think no matter where you live, you're going to see store displays that are, you know, youth friendly. It's in our kids' faces every day. We live in New York City and there are thousands of these stores selling products and many of them are illegal vape shops, but some of them are gas stations, convenience stores, smoke shops where kids are allowed in and these products are right in the faces of our kids being marketed with discounts and at eye level next to candy. Um, so we really need to be aware of these and many of them again are illegal and we can help stop them in your communities. You can, you can have a voice in that in your own communities. Um, also, this industry has been very, very good at targeting specific, uh, specific populations. Uh, when I say industry, I mean the vaping industry as well as big tobacco, you know, the tobacco industry more broadly. Um, through various, you know, promotions towards LGBTQ populations, for example, hosting gay pride events and sponsoring these big events, um, you know, getting to know the communities and, um, and targeting them. And nowhere is this more nefarious than Big Tobacco's targeting of the black communities with menthol products and their cultural framing of menthol as the, the, the cigarette of choice, the flavor of choice. Um, and now, as Dorian mentioned, there, you know, we hope that uh, the FDA will rule to take menthol off the market. But in the meantime, this history has been uh, has really gotten its its uh, claws into the black communities. And years ago, they were handing these out, these products out, cigarettes, and you know, mostly cigarettes in the black communities, handing them out for free and targeting them with advertising like ones you see here. And guess what? It worked. And now 95% of black smoker, 85% of black smokers smoke menthol. And even more so with kids, it's 95% uh, who smoke menthol in, in, in our youth. So we really just want to make you aware, um, just to know that menthol has this um, cooling effect and it's, it makes it easier to inhale, easier to get addicted. Uh, it sort of cools and numbs the throat and the lungs. And so it's it, it's very nefarious. And also you'll see some of these products are called iced products, which our kids are using. Those are basically mentholated products and um, they're very popular among our youth. So uh, you wanna talk about the regulation, Dorian? Right, so um, as Mimi mentioned, menthol is something that is extremely addictive and the vaping companies have taken uh, this lesson and they have turned a lot of their flavors, whether it's the fruit flavors, the candy flavors, into iced flavors. So why are these still available to our kids? Um, the FDA has failed to fully regulate these products for years. I mean, years. They have put off regulation of these products. And then once they started to go through the PMTA process, which is the pre-market tobacco review, um, they had tens of millions of products that were submitted. So it took so much longer than they expected, than anyone expected. So they promised that they will be finished by the end of the year, um, by the end of 2023, so December 31st. Uh, we shall see. I'm not sure um, if we are going to actually see that. Um, but it's it's true. So there have been so many products that have been um, denied already. And then the products that have been authorized are the products, as Mimi mentioned, that are owned by tobacco companies, by big tobacco, by RJ Reynolds, by um, you know, Views and others. So um, we'll see what happens. But the products that are currently on the market um, are mostly flavored. Flavored are the products that addict kids. Um, they're all disposable. And in 20, I'm sorry, in 2019, um, then President Trump had put some policies into effect where they were going to restrict the sale of flavored pod-based systems like Jules. Well, that just opened the market for all of these disposables to flood the stores. And now the number one favorite of teens is these cheap disposable products, which are pouring into our country from China. 95% of these disposable products are actually manufactured in China. China has banned flavored 
e-cigarettes in their own country. I just want you guys to listen to that. China has banned the sale of flavored e-cigarettes in their own country to protect Chinese children, and yet they manufacture 95% of the world's flavored disposable e-cigarette products and sell them to kids all over the world. Um, that's another reason that state and local laws are incredibly vital, because while we're waiting for FDA to fully regulate, while we're waiting for Border Patrol to keep these products out of our country, state and local laws need to protect kids. They need to restrict the sale of these products. Um, and I believe Mimi mentioned earlier that what you see today as a teen favorite will not be a teen favorite in six months, and it certainly wasn't a teen favorite six months ago. Um, they're constantly changing. Now, these products, Elf Bar is the number one um, favorite product among kids, according to the latest National Youth Tobacco Survey numbers. Um, they are the products, the number one product that is flooding into our market from China. They're not being stopped at the border. They cost pennies compared to what a pack of cigarettes cost. And they come in a multitude of wonderful tasting, wonderful smelling flavors. You know, that's what we hear all the time. It tastes so good. How could it be bad for me? It tastes so good. Um, if you see in these pictures, you can see the mint ice. You know, they're iced flavors, which are again, more addictive than just regular flavors. Um, we mentioned the, the pod base, the refillables. Those are not so much teen favorites anymore, although of course they, they will use them, whether it's the smoke, whether it's the Swarin. Um, they can be refilled. Some of these jewel pods and others can be refilled with liquid devices. Um, I've even seen on TikTok how people can take apart disposable um, vapes and refill it with some of this liquid. Um, you know, kids will do anything, but this is yeah. another set of devices. Um, and they're all called bars. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. maybe. Well, they look like a bar. I was just saying that, you know, often we hear that kids are refilling them with THC liquid. So it's really important to understand these products are all interchangeable and we won't go too much into cannabis today, but it is all colliding. And these products, uh, they can be used interchangeably with uh, THC liquid and, and nicotine liquid. So it's really important. And our, and our, our kids are, are in fact doing that. So, right. Uh, yeah. Mimi, I just want to mention this Puff Bar here. So Puff Bar about a year ago was the number one teen favorite. They were flavored nicotine e-cigarettes. They were the number one favorite. Um, when, F they, they, when FDA, they had not submitted uh, uh, an application to be reviewed by FDA. So at, they switched to synthetic nicotine, trying to get away from, I'm getting a little bit into the weeds, but you'll see why, trying to get away from um, the FDA's authority. Well, now FDA can regulate synthetic nicotine. So Puff Bar is pulled back. They're selling non-nicotine vapes, which we will get into shortly. But just recently, we noticed, to your point, Mimi, they're selling THC vapes online over the internet that any kid can buy, even in, in states where THC is not authorized. So these companies are so nefarious, they will take any loophole, they will get to your kids however they can. And I think what's really important about these nicotine, uh, the, the nicotine disposable devices, I think why our kids love them is, first of all, they're cheap. Secondly, they're super easy to conceal from parents because they use them and they throw them away. Um, and third, because they contain a lot of nicotine. Um, you know, it used to be they contain one to two packs of cigarettes worth of nicotine. Now it can be hundreds and hundreds of puffs, thousands of puffs, because they're making these really intense, uh, you know, high, highly potent uh, forms that, that are like thousands of puffs. So I think our kids are really gravitating for those reasons. Right, you can see this elf bar, it says LB5000, that means 5,000 puffs. Well, now there are 7,000, 8,000 puffs. And again, you'll see red apple ice. They're all iced flavors. Um, yeah. There's no know, caps nicotine. Exactly, and then you have the other flavored nicotine products. So our kids, um, you know, can't really vape in class anymore because their teachers know now what it's all about. Um, they know how to spot a vape. So you have these, uh, pouches, the Zin pouches, the Velo pouches, which are like the chewing tobacco of the past, but you swallow it. So you stick it under your under your cheek and you can suck on it all day long. It comes again with incredible amounts of nicotine. I hear that kids in college are putting 
three or four into their mouth before they go to a party and you know they get this wild buzz you can see this extreme curwa bubble gum um in, incredible amounts of nicotine 30 milligrams of nicotine that's a huge amount and then you have other companies like lucy now lucy has an fda approved lozenge as an nrt and nicotine replacement therapy to help um people quit smoking but this gum is not approved as an nrt and they sell it together on the same website so there's a lot of confusion about what's authorized and regulated and what's not and that's important because you need to know what chemicals and how much nicotine your kids are ingesting and i think that's a really good point too i mean i know that my own daughter when she was trying to quit she was going to these gums and, and pouches thinking that that was a good way to get off of vapes and it's not. Uh, if they want to try to quit, they should see a specialist because the nicotine replacement therapies are not the same kind of nicotine and they're not meant to keep you addicted, whereas this is meant to keep keep youth addicted. So, um, yeah, and I, I mean, these, so the, we know we're talking mostly about nicotine vapes today, but these are really important for, for parents and others to understand. Um, there are vapes out there that are being marketed as wellness vapes and you know, it's vape your vitamin B and you need more energy or you wanna help sleep, vape this, right? Um, the important thing to know is that, first of all, these are not regulated products. Um, they're making unsubstantiated claims, uh, health claims and safety claims, and, and that is very bad. The, sec the other thing to know is they contain most of the same chemicals that these nicotine vapes contain, the propylene glycol, the glycerol, all the, the flavorings that are um, that are really irritating our kids' lungs and bodies, and so it's really important to know that um, don't you know this is not a free pass for kids. Uh, this is another thing that my daughter started using, thinking, well, at least I'm not doing the nicotine, but it was the same irritants going into her lungs, and eventually she stopped because she understood that. Um, there's also no age restrictions, so these are sold anywhere. They're sold at Urban Outfitters, at least they used to be. Um, and so kids can buy them pretty much anywhere. And the final thing to know is that even though they will say they have no nicotine, uh, there have been studies done by scientists and they, they look at the, at the chemicals in these and they find nicotine. So because right. they're regulated, they can say whatever they want. So it's really important to know. And of course, look at the marketing. I mean, they're going right after our kids with these, right? These are, you know, beautiful, beautiful, colorful marketing to our kids. Right. No. And it, it, it made me, it reminds me of the, um, remember the bubblegum cigarettes or the chocolate cigarettes when we were growing up that you would like yeah. pretend to look like you're an adult and you would like this bubblegum cigarette. It's the same thing. It normalizes the behavior. So if a kid thinks, oh, I'm going to vape melatonin to help me go to sleep. And then they're used to vaping. When they go to a party, they're not going to think twice about picking up a nicotine vape. And then Later on down the line, they're not going to think twice about picking up a THC vape. So it's right. really important. And, and again, as Mimi said, these products are not regulated. So why are vapes so dangerous? Um, well, there are lots of reasons. We talked about the fact that they're not regulated. They're actually more addictive in many instances than cigarettes. Um, the high, high levels of nicotine salts were designed to hit the bloodstream and the brain more quickly. They tried to make... Um, Juul and others mimic cigarettes um, when they were trying to use it as an, you know, a, a, a switch from smoking to vaping. Um, but what we found out, you know, the levels of nicotine in Juul, for instance, were so high that when they were developing them and they were testing them on their own employees, people would run to the bathroom and vomit because the, the nicotine was so high. And they've kept that nicotine high because they want to addict the consumer. They can be used discreetly. They fit in the palm of your hand. Um, you know, you before they kids would use these in class and teachers thought they were flash drives. They didn't know the difference. Um, the nicotine in one device is one to two packs of cigarettes. Well, yes, but that's actually outdated now. When you have the vapes that have 8,000 puffs, you know, that's about five packs of cigarettes. And it's designed for smoother inhale, which means that the pH balance is smoother. The um, the flavoring makes it smoother, the iced flavor makes it smoother, um, and there's also no portion control. With a cigarette, you smoke a cigarette and you put it out. Vaping you do 24-7, kids sleep with it under their pillow, so they can always use it. Cigarettes, you have to go outside. Cigarettes smell. People know when you're smoking. There's 
um, you know, it, it's it's harsher to inhale, and there's a social stigma associated with smoking cigarettes. Um, you know, and then all of these chemicals in these vapes, um, and again, those are the chemicals we know about. When chemicals get heated to very, very, very high temperatures and combined with other chemicals, they'll often form a third chemical. But anything that you're inhaling into your lungs at such a high, high level of heat is dangerous. But these are known tox toxins um, as defined by FDA and, and poison control. Yeah, and I also think it's worth mentioning that um, you know, I think most kids don't understand what the chemicals are or that there are chemicals in these. I think people are a little bit smarter about it now because there's more talk about it. But I remember when my daughter was first vaping, she looked at me and said, Mom, it's, it's just flavored water. Well, right. there's 0% water in these products, but they, they had no idea. Many, uh, you know, the early labels didn't even have warning labels that there was nicotine. So kids, most kids didn't know, or many kids, I shouldn't say most, many kids right. did not know that there was nicotine in these products. So my they were... Very knew. cool. Right. It's so funny. He said, Yeah, mom, I knew there was nicotine. It said 5%. He's like, 5% out of 100 is nothing. He's like, I thought it was like, I didn't know what that meant, 5%. Well, 5% is right. a lot. And kids also don't understand what addiction is. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, so, you know, all of this to me is is less relevant if it didn't hurt the body, right? But what we know, uh, and we're learning more and more, uh, but we certainly know today is that youth vaping is not good for youth. It is not good for developing brains. Um, it is, first of all, uh, youth, youth brains are kind of squishy and highly susceptible to addiction. Their pathways are open. And basically what happens when people, youth, young people vape nicotine is that they get this nice dopamine rush. It's what, it's this cool alluring rush that they feel. Well, that dopamine, um, our bodies, our brains normally uh, release dopamine on its own, especially when fun things happen or good things happen. We score, uh, you know, in soccer or we score in Fortnite. This is, you getting a dopamine release. But what happens with nicotine is when you start to use it, um, you need more and more nicotine just to feel normal. And so this is what happens. This is the addiction. And when you take that nicotine away and you have withdrawal symptoms, um, then you start to feel edgy and anxious. So you just keep the nicotine just to keep that normal level that you always had before you needed the nicotine. Um, mm -hmm. It's also, it's damaging the brain and these are permanent damages, unfortunately, including cognitive changes like worsening memory, worsening processing speed, um, impulse control issues. And we have seen that firsthand. Um, and we'll talk about some of the signs of vaping, but, and it can also, you know, the thing is, um, what we're being told by our, our mental health experts is that while it doesn't necessarily cause anxiety and depression, it can worsen underlying mental health issues like anxiety and depression. So it's really important just to keep an eye out for your kids in terms of what you're seeing, um, because it might be that they're vaping and they need they think they need it, but it's actually making it, making their issues worse. Right. That's so true. Um you know, the lungs continue to develop, to develop until the age of 25, just like a child's brain. Um, and these vape aerosols, they're not vapor water, it's aerosols. And they contain heavy metals. They contain fine particulates. They contain chemicals that we don't even know about. And because you are sucking so deeply at such high temperatures, they're going really deep into your lungs. The mentholated flavors actually open up the air passages um, and it causes irritation, it causes inflammation. Um, some people have allergies to nickel or to lead that they don't even know about. And when they're vaping and it 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 attacks the, the really, really, really soft tissues in the lungs, you can have, um, you know, Definitely, you can have um, irritation, you can have inflammation, but can, it can even go worse. You know, if you happen to get pneumonia, it can just exacerbate that. Um, you know, we have parents who work with us whose kids um, were vaping and their lungs were so weakened that when they got pneumonia, um, it was just devastating to their lungs. We know several parents whose kids have had lung replacements. Now, again, those are the real, the real. Um, dramatic not everyone is going to do that but many people will have the coughing have the wheezing have the irritation asthma it's been proven 
to exacerbate asthma in kids who already have asthma and actually create asthma in kids who don't have asthma yet. Um, you know, they've never been diagnosed with asthma and then all of a sudden they vape in and the asthma comes up. And then chronic lung disease, you know, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but um, these chemicals in these lungs are not tested. They have not been around long enough. These products haven't been around long enough to really be able to do these long-term longitudinal studies that are necessary to understand if these products are dangerous and if they're more dangerous to the lungs, if they're more dangerous to the heart. Um, you know, the data, the it's just the, the data's not in yet. Yeah, and actually we have this fantastic uh, doctor, he's a, a pulmonologist out of um, Johns Hopkins who has done a lot of work in this area. And he basically says that, you know, we know that we know that it's not good for the lungs today, but we will, we may not know until our kids are in their thirties and possibly beyond what the full effects are, because that's when you have reached your maximum capacity for growth and you see where it has been stunted. So unfortunately, you know, our kids are being used as experiments in this, in this process. So, um, and then in terms of, you know, the heart, nicotine is a stimulant. So it, it, it stimulates the heart. It gets the heart racing. Um, my daughter complained of palpitations and her heart racing. And um, I said, well, are you vaping? And she said, yes. I said, well, you know, it's a stimulant. It's going to um, elevate the heart rate. It's, it, uh, it can, you know, we've heard, you know, it increased blood pressure, um, also increased adrenaline. It gets that fight or flight response going, right? Which is something that generally you don't have unless you're being chased by a, a, a bear or something. Um, and also the flavors in, the flavored chemicals in these vapes are not good for the heart. So there is really no good news. It also affects other organs as well. Um, and, uh, you know, there are studies being done that just the nicotine alone without any of the other um, chemicals is causing uh, issues. I, I don't want to say, but uh, but bad issues in in the mice uh, in the mice in the labs, uh, their um, livers and bladders and um, and other other organs. So um, you know it it is all all bad. Um, it's also we're finding more and more about uh, damage to the DNA in uh, in humans, not just the oral cells, but elsewhere. Um, and as Dorian said, you know, these products are um, weakening the immune system. So first of all, they're social devices. So our kids, what are they doing? They're sharing them at parties, right? So anything that they share, they're going to share, be sharing those germs as well. So whether it's COVID or the flu or other colds, um, you know, if kids are always sick, it could be a sign that they're just sharing these things range, right? <laughs> Um, and they're more likely to get a more um, severe case of whatever it is that they have because their immune system has been weakened. Um, and then, you know, we have heard many reports of, of youth um, having seizures. Now, these are kids who never had seizures before and now have seizures from, uh, you know, a high levels of nicotine. We are not yet drawing a link between the two, but we are saying there are, there have been many reports. The CDC has taken reports. They sort of slowed uh, taking reports during COVID because uh, there were bigger issues um, going on. But um, we do want to you know explore more. Um, and uh, and also there's something called Nixic, which um, you know vaping a lot of nicotine can diminish the appetite, can make you nauseous. As Dorian said, we've we've had youth tell us. They vaped so much they vomited, but then they were addicted, so they kept vaping. Um, they tend to lose weight, um, not feel well, so it's just another thing to look out for, and we'll talk about those signs. Right, and you know, we we always mention this, Evoli, it was a big thing um, a couple of years ago, then COVID hit and they stopped tracking Evoli. So the main outbreak of Evoli was linked to the vitamin E acetate in THC vapes, um, but 14% of cases were due to nicotine alone, and these are cases where they had tox screenings, they knew that there was no THC in the system. As <clears> I said before, um, very often someone could have, uh, whether it's a, uh, an allergy to nickel or an allergy to lead, or their lungs could be weak and they get pneumonia. All of that is encompassed in Evoli, Evoli is e-cigarette vaping associated lung injury. And the CDC is still tracking this, although they're not really publicizing it. But last year, 32,000 cases of lung illness. And of those 32,000 cases, 70% were 
were under the age of 30. Now, again, they're not differentiating whether it's THC or whether it's nicotine or whether it's both, um, which is something that will have to be done in order to understand what is happening here. But again, it's a combination of all sorts of illnesses that are associated with vaping and with lung injury. So just wanted to put that out there. Um, you know, I think here we're gonna get into the meat and potatoes of the presentation, if you will. Um, the reasons teens vape, how to tell if your teen is vaping, and then how to talk to your teen about vaping. So um, reasons teens vape, you know, we spoke about flavors earlier. Among high schoolers, 85 to 90% are using flavored products. Among those, 37% are using menthol, but that's not including the number of kids who are using the iced flavors. Now, FDA and CDC just started tracking the iced flavors in the latest National Youth Tobacco Survey, and it shows that it is one of the favorites. Um, youth targeted marketing, as we discussed earlier, and the accessibility, they are so affordable. Kids are selling to each other, kids are getting them from the gas station, from the vape shop down the street. Um, they're even getting them on Uber Eats. They're getting them through the mail. You can order them on any website like eBay and ask for discrete packaging and they will send it to you in a, in a different packaging so your parents won't know what it is. So they are stealth still and easily accessible. Yeah. And you know, we can't uh, dismiss the social norms and the social pressure involved. Yes, there are real issues in our country with mental health. I mean, it's huge. And Truth Initiative itself, they termed this, uh, coined this term colliding crisis between mental health and substance use. And it is real. And vaping is so accessible and so easy and it seems so harmless to kids that it's an easy one to start with, right? Um, so we cannot dismiss uh, that heightened anxiety and depression are a, a reason for substance use. But we also need to remember that, um, that these are social products and some kids do use them in silence and in, in secret. Uh, you know, as one of our addiction psychiatrists said, addiction hides in the shadows. And I think there is shame still around addiction and some kids uh, are ashamed that they're using them. However, other kids are using them very socially. Um, they feel a social pressure. It's sort of a coming of age kind of thing. It's a way to show that they've grown up. And so it's just something to talk to your kids about. It's not, you know, this is not necessarily a way to show that you've grown up. Also this head rush I mentioned before, it, this nicotine kick because of the intense amount of nicotine through this um, Juul patented nicotine salts that Juul created, but everyone else is using that causes this alluring rush. Um, and they're just highly addictive products. And also they hear safer than cigarettes in advertising and they think safe. They don't think that it's harmful. Um, hidden in plain sight. You know, I think we mentioned earlier that um, before with Juul, it looked like a flash drive, but even today they look like markers. They look like um, colorful highlighters. They're actually, creating them to look specifically like highlighters, even those that aren't, we, we don't have a picture of those here, but a lot of them do look like school supplies. This is hidden in plain sight. If you look here, I don't know if anyone can notice, but there you go. You've got the Swarin, you've got the, the Stig, you've got all of these different um, vapes. And again, these are kind of the older generation, but the ones today are even more colorful. Yeah, they look like flash drives and things that they aren't, right? I so know. 10 signs of vaping. I'm sure there are others. We're, we're mentioning some of the big ones here um, because frankly, there are things that we all missed uh, when we didn't even know that what Juul was at the time. Um, so here's the challenge with these, is that um, some of these are just teen behaviors that are um, just normal in teens. And so I think the question is, they are here, but <clears throat> maybe there are things that are slightly different than what you know your child has been behaving in a different way, right? And that may be a sign. So one of them is a secretive attitude, right? Again, a sign of a teen, right. uh, my kids all close their doors. But um, it could be that their doors close and they wanna use incense or um, they keep the door open, or the windows open a lot, or if you're on vacation with them or out to dinner that they need to go to the bathroom often, it could be that they just need to go and hit their vape because they are feeling withdrawal symptoms. So that is one sign. Um, another one I missed, sweet smells. So um, 
these things are not vapor, they're aerosol. And aerosol sticks to things. If you think about hairspray, it sticks to your clothes, it sticks to your hair. And when my daughter would come home at night, and as I did with all my kids, I made them kiss me goodnight. And so I could see if they were okay. Um, I smelled this sweet smell, but I couldn't place it because I didn't know what it was. Um, it turns out it was likely e-cigarettes, um, you know, that she had been vaping, kids around her might've been vaping and it stuck to her. I missed that. Um, also this dry mucous membrane, um, it could cause mouth, you know, nosebleeds and mouth sores and things like that, just to be aware of. Um, you know, also I like, look, you know, we showed you some of the pictures Look in their backpacks, look in their drawers, look in their in their rooms, um, look for these objects that you don't recognize and, and it's maybe time to open the conversation. Um, also changes in sleeping patterns because nicotine is a stimulant and it often will help, you know, make it very hard for kids to fall asleep if they're vaping in the evening. And we've often heard of kids dual using THC at night to come down from the nicotine high and agitation that they get during the day. So that's something else to look out for. Also, kids are keeping them under their pillows sometimes because sometimes their body wakes them up. These This nicotine salt, the high levels of nicotine, hits the blood very fast, but it comes down very fast. So if they're sleeping and all of a sudden, you know, their body like will wake them up craving, literally craving the nicotine and they'll keep it under their pillow and they'll vape. I noticed my son was drinking a ton of water. Um, because he had dry mouth, he was thirsty all the time. Um, and then the plastic caps, the the wires, sometimes it'll run out of battery, but because it's disposable, they'll kind of put the wires together and they'll charge it themselves. Um, yeah, you know, again, the dry mucous membranes from the pro propylene glycol can also create the raspy cough, the chest pain, the shortness of breath. I know my son said, oh my God, I have to stop because I can't run down the basketball court anymore. And he didn't realize that's when he realized how hard it was. Um, a lot of kids will stop drinking caffeine because they're already so jittery from the nicotine in the e-cigarettes. Um, we talked about the depression and anxiety. Mood swings is a huge factor, you know, these explosive fits of anger, pushing dressers over, pounding walls. I mean, those are the stories we hear over and over. It creates real irritability, even anger in some kids. Um, and then Mimi mentioned the being nick sick, the gastrointestinal issues. Um, kids will lose 20 pounds. Like if your child all of a sudden loses 10 or 20 pounds in a month, chances are they're vaping or something might else, something else might be wrong of course but it's it's a real sign um and then you can get these deliveries i remember you know you see uber eats or um any of these food delivery services will also deliver vapes you can buy them online and they'll come in brown packaging so strange deliveries and then increased spending that you just don't know where it's going yeah, I mean, we all, you know, a lot of our kids have these apps now, Venmo and other apps, the spending apps, um, but know that our kids, you know, it could be just a time to ask the questions, can I see your purchases? Um, and many of them are just to friends. Uh, there are Instagram purchases, people sell them through Instagram in the school communities. So it's just worth asking the question. Um, so how do I talk to my child? This is a very personal thing. Um, we have, you know, received this advice from parenting experts, psych psychiatrists, addiction psychiatrists, et cetera. And just from, you know, going through this, but um, recognizing that every parent has their own relationship with their child. Um, you know, I think that there are different tiers of this, right? <clears throat> there are young kids who, uh, who haven't ever vaped, may not know what they are yet. And we're learning now, it's time to have a conversation younger and younger. We're getting uh, emails from teachers that kids as young as second grade are getting them. And in fact, in some cases, they're getting them from home. Um, so it's just really important to know that, you know, to have these conversations very early, but also to come at it. Um, so for, for young kids, I think you can come at it from different standpoints. For kids who are already vaping, I think, and you and you may know it because you found vapes, or um, you know, it, it's time to have you know conversations. But most importantly, to come at it with heart and compassion. These kids have been targeted. 
And again, the, the addiction can be really rough and it can be very hard to quit. So it's just helpful to you know, be able to support them. So we say start early, use, use opportunities like you see someone on TV vaping or you see someone on the street vaping, you know, have a conversation with them. And you know, how do you feel about that? Does that, you know, what are you seeing at school? Are you seeing it in the bathrooms? How does that make you feel? Does it make you, are you curious? Does it make you want to try it? You know, uh, does it make you uncomfortable? So, you know, starting to open the, open the conversation so your kids know that they can trust you and that you won't be judgmental. Um, also, it's not a one-time conversation like with all of this. Sex, sex, drugs, rock and roll. We have to have these conversations over and over. Um, and then also knowing that, you know, to be sensitive of your child's privacy because it may be a tough topic for them to talk about. Right. I mean, don't talk to your kids in front of their friends. Um, again, as Mimi said, it's not a one-time conversation. You know, a lot of parents will say, oh, she shut me down. Well, start over, keep trying. Um, and there's one, not one single approach. You know, we talk about how every family is different. Um, your kid might be really into sports or might be really into something else. Find something that you have in common and just start a conversation and then just bring it up very casually. And if they're not interested in talking about it, try again. You know, there's not one single approach. Um, and it's important to talk with your kids, as Mimi said, mm -hmm. say, hey, you know, are you seeing this in school? Or I've been hearing about this from my friends. What do you know? Um, you don't lecture your kids. You have to ask questions and you have to listen to them most importantly. I think it's really important um, to come from a place of understanding. I think it's important to tell your kids that you disapprove of vaping, but you have to keep the conversation open because if for some, you know, if you find out that your child is vaping or if your child is vaping, you know, you want to be the person that they come to. One of our parenting experts said, don't say, I think vaping is awful, because then the kid will internalize it and say, well, she said vaping's awful, then I must be awful, then I must be an awful person. So shame and blame can really create distance. And even if you say something you might not think is shaming and blaming it is, you should talk about how it makes you feel and how you want to, um, you know, you want your child to have the best of everything and how it really worries you. Um, you know, you have to talk to them, you have to listen to them, you have to really be their advocate. Um, model behavior, you know, this is easier said than done on so many different levels, but, you know, if you smoke or if you vape, talk to your child, tell them how it makes you feel, tell them that you started smoking, if this is the case, at a very young age and how you wish you never did. Tell them that you're vaping because you don't want to be smoking, but that it's not an excuse for them to vape. So be honest with them. Try to model the behavior as much as possible. Um, encourage honesty. You know, if your child is not comfortable speaking with you or um, the guardian or find someone who maybe the child is comfortable speaking to, whether it's a coach, whether it's, you know, a troop scout leader, whether it's, um, you know, someone at your church or faith-based community. You know, it's really important that they have other resources. Um, and if you do find out that your child is vaping, you know, I, I think everyone's first response is, how could you do that after everything I've told? You have to take a moment and it's not easy, but you have to take a moment and take a breath and then find resources, talk to other people, give yourself a moment. And then when you've calmed down, when you have some information, you can go back and talk to your kids. Um, you know, it's, it's not their fault. It's not your fault. Um, this stuff came at us like a freight train and no one really knew what it was all about. No one really understood how they were marketing to kids on social media where parents were not. Um, we actually have a Facebook group called um, the Parent Support Group on our Parents Against Vaping Facebook page. And we have 600 parents who share resources, share tips, tell you know how they got their child to quit vaping, talk about what products, what nicotine replacement therapy worked and it's a really great um community if you do find that you need um you know someone to talk to that maybe you don't know sometimes it's easier to talk to people you don't know yeah and i will just say too just based on my own personal experience and also talking to addiction psychiatrists in the field is that we have to support our kids and they will not quit until they are ready 
but you have to still be there when they're ready. So um, it took my daughter her, on her own pace um, when she finally uh, graduated college and moved to a different city from college where the you know regular thing was parties and football games and this and that where she vaped was to take her away from that and said, okay, when I move, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna try to quit. And it can take several times and just to be patient with them, it really can take quite a few attempts. I, I, I'm sure cigarette, uh, quitting cigarettes is also very difficult. Quitting vaping is really hard for youth. Um, so ways to support our kids. Um, there are a variety of ways. First, talk to your pediatricians and local experts um, in the field. Um, they can help you, even though unfortunately there are no quit um, treatments for youth that are FDA approved yet. Um, it, the uh, American Academy of Pedi Pediatrics is still giving guidance and there are, um, doctors will give you prescriptions for their youth, for your youth and just titrate them for their age and bodies. Um, also, there are other things, um, while there's NRTs, uh, as we mentioned, there are other things like quitting apps, like This Is Quitting, which is a truth initiative app, which is an AI driven app which gives you support. And there's a parent version and a kid version. So you can do it with your child while they're doing it themselves. And it just gives you tips. You know, if you're having trouble one day, how are you feeling today? Are you having cravings? Click here for some advice on how to deal with those cravings. So um, I think these are really great, um, you know, either with or um, in addition or instead of other devices and NRTs. Right, you know, um, kids don't understand addiction. I mean, you know, it, it's at their age, they are creating memories, they're creating habits, they're learning things. They don't understand addiction. So when they realize they're addicted, they don't know what to do. Um, and as Mimi said, it relapses normal. Sometimes it takes 10 times to quit. You know, they, they, they'll relapse, they'll go back. They'll get there. They need your support. They need your love. You know, you have to parent with love and, um, and 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 that's really the best way. Um, we also work with a lot of organizations that have this school-based curricula. You know, again, it's not to say that there is that there are no consequences for one's behavior. However, very often, if a school um, expels a student for vaping, then you know what? Maybe you're isolating them, and maybe you are really sending them down the wrong path. So, what we advocate for and we work with a lot of our partners and we work with a lot of schools is um this school-based curricula which really has programs so if you if your child is caught vaping they'll have to stay after school and do some of this education they'll have to do extra work the parent will have to come in we work together with the school it takes a village i mean that old tried and true saying is very true it takes a village especially when we're talking about substances after covid um we all know that substance use and depression and anxiety has skyrocketed in america but especially among teens um so these are just a few of the the, the groups that we work with and a few of the curricula we use there are many many others if you want to go onto our website we have many more listed um and partner with your school go to your school administrator go to the principal go to the, even the school nurse and say what are you doing um about vaping how are you helping our kids what is your um what is your policy what is your stance on this and how can i help i think that's really important is to partner with your schools yeah i mean uh, you know as dorian mentioned uh the outcomes for kids who are suspended versus outcomes for kids where restorative approaches are used are very different and so we are really urging you to urge your schools, and if there's teachers on and school people, school uh, professionals on, um, just to really urge your schools to use more restorative approaches. Um, and then I think we're gonna talk about vapes are trash, um, which we are very proud of. Is that next, Dorian? Yes, so um, vapes are trash. So parents were saying to us, look, our, my child doesn't care about the health harms. They don't get it. I need another way to to get to my child, something that resonates with them. So we came up with this campaign, this social media campaign that deals with the environment because our kids care so deeply and passionately about the environment, perhaps more than their own bodies. Um, so this uh, campaign is really addressing the social and environmental justice impacts of e-cigarettes from the time a tobacco leaf is planted 
all the way till um, till disposal because these e-cigarettes effectively are not disposable, even the disposable ones. Um, and I won't go into the details right now, but they are basically contain all sorts of things that make it very hard to, to get rid of. And they're toxic, they have toxic chemicals and other things. So youth have been using this campaign um, and teachers and parents as well to get to their kids. So we've hosted Earth Day events uh, in our city. We you know, Other people have done these across the country. There are many ways to use this campaign uh, and you can go online at Vapes Are Trash to, to talk about, to learn about that. Right. So, um, and just a fun fact, fun fact, um, we throw away two disposable vapes per second, per second in this country. Um, poison, parents opposing the illegal sales of nicotine. So this is something that we came up with when parents came to us and said, I know the gas station on the corner is selling to my kids, or I know the 7-Eleven is selling to my kids. Well, this is what we do, is we get parents, we help them create a group of like-minded parents. We figure out in whatever city or town they live in how to, um, how to report these stores. We piloted a program in New York City which has um, legalized the sale of marijuana, but they haven't rolled it out yet. And there are thousands, thousands and thousands and thousands of smoke shops that are selling illegal marijuana and illegal flavored e-cigarettes, which are banned in New York City and New York State. And we piloted this program and we came up with a list of hundreds of stores selling these, which we then gave to the city and we're working in collaboration with the city. So it empowers parents to um, elevate and highlight the lack of enforcement in their community. We're not putting parents, we're not giving parents badges and saying, go shut down the stores. We just wanna elevate the lack of enforcement so that the um, government understands and that they will then end up doing something. Um, so I think we've come to the question and answer part, Mimi, of this, um, of our presentation. So it's been, a thrill to be here. And if there's anything that we did not talk about, we would love to um, love to answer your questions. <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah, this is our, we have this podcast. We haven't done anything recently, but um, big tobacco mess for the wrong moms. We interview parents, we interview scientists, we interview legislators. It's really fun for us. Um, social media, we have, um, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. As I said, we have the parent support group on Facebook. Um, we put a lot of the latest articles. We put a lot of the latest information. We put some of our um, presentations. So come and join us on social media and come to our website. We have lots and lots and lots of the latest. And, um, you know, if you need anything or reach out to us, we have links that you can um, email us on and ask us any questions directly or sign up to help us. So before we get to Q&A, uh, I want to give a little plug to this parent handbook, which is fantastic. I had a chance to go through it uh, a bit. And, you know, it's not just about vaping. There's vaping at the, um, you know, at some point at the end. But it's really just a broad range of topics that are so helpful to parents. Um, so I love it. I'm looking forward to even sifting through it more. Um, I appreciate you guys giving it to me. And I'm sure it's available to, I think, anyone on this uh, that's gone on this webinar. So um, I'm really impressed with all the work that you all have done. It's quite amazing. Thank you so much, Mimi, and well done on your presentation. Um, our our team has been letting us know they, they can't stop taking notes. And um, we've also heard from someone in the audience that said that they are adding some more important points to their youth prevention presentation. So we've got a lot of kudos and a lot of uh, great feedback, as well as several questions to get to, but I'm gonna let the audience know just a couple more things about Operation Parent before we go there. Um, so this holiday season, we're really excited to offer a special uh, discount on the handbooks that Mimi was just speaking about. We, um, you can enjoy that through November 30th, a 20% discount off uh, your entire order. And you can do that right online. Um, it's available right now. If you go to operationparent.org backslash store and type in the code BF20, uh, you would be able to take advantage of that discount. I want you to know whether you want a middle and high edition, an elementary edition, print or a digital feature, 
You can also use any combination of those. Uh, we also have Spanish editions available online. Um, and you can think about purchasing one for yourself uh, or your relatives, um, or maybe even think about taking a, purchasing a sample that you could take to your school and share with your counselors. Uh, there's a lot of ways that you could um, think about that as a great gifting opportunity. The Parent Handbook has more facts, stats, and tips for effective communication to tackle some of the toughest parenting issues uh, we have. You can see vaping and all the reasons why uh, parents need to tackle that issue with their youth right away. Um, and we've got a, a good bit of information in those handbooks on vaping. We also cover substances, mental health, um, and so much more. So and we I encourage you to invest um, in your own self, your own family, as well as your community's well-being and make this holiday season one to really remember by uh, just taking a couple of minutes and purchasing an Operation Parent Parent Handbook. So I'll let you know too, our ninth edition, um, our middle and high is just newly released and that's the ninth edition of that handbook. And so we've worked really hard to keep that current and relevant. Um, we, we are all uh, chasing a really tough culture and things are changing really quickly. But I'll say that parent handbook will get you introduced to a lot of uh, tough topics, but most importantly, help you frame up some conversations as well as give you a lot of hope um, that you as the parent have the, the most important influence um, on your youth and can really make a difference. We also have a TNT trends and training program, and this is a full drug education package kit that is made for you. The advertising is prepared. The drug facts are um, ready for you to be in front of a large group and educate them about um, drugs and most importantly, ramp up their refusal skills. Uh, but we have great community advocates um, on our team that could talk to you more about the TNT program. You can use the QR code. Um, we could share a video with you about the program. So if you'd like to know more about the TNT program, please use that QR code and reach out to our team and let us um, tell you a little bit more about how people are using that program all over the country. And then um, I invite you to join us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn as well. And just our communities are growing there. They're vibrant. Just like you guys mentioned, you've got that very active parent uh, program on Facebook. We're, we're growing as well. So we'll look forward to growing with you in, in parallel as we grow those communities and get more people involved in really important work. Yeah, and this, uh, this is our QR code. You know, we love to get feedback. We love to know what parents and um, anyone who's listening in thinks about the presentation, uh, getting some feedback there. But also, if you want to get involved, um, you know, one way to get involved, which is very easy but really powerful in your communities, is to share your story. So if you go online, um, you can go on this uh, QR code, tell us what you think about the presentation, but also it invites you to get involved, either by sharing your own personal story um, or you can become an educator just like we are doing now in your own communities. We can train you to do that. We have a toolkit that can uh, teach you how to do this. Very simple, provide all the slides, talking points, everything. So you can do this in your own communities um, or advocate, as Dorian said, by, you know, reporting shops or, um, you know, standing on the steps of City Hall if there's uh, bills, you know, legislation uh, being done in your area. So um, we urge you to get involved. We'd love to hear from you. And I think that might be okay. it. Questions? So we're ready for the questions. All righty. Um, so this is from a prevention uh, specialist in the audience. Our kids' parents still say that um, parents are saying to them directly, well, at least they aren't using harder drugs. Um, and, you know, we would rather our kids vape than do anything else. What is your response? I'm sure you've heard. Um, You've heard that as well. What do you what do you say to someone that might say that? Um, I mean, I I would say that, you know, yeah. But what's you know, it's like what's better, heroin or cocaine? I mean, sure, you're grateful that you're not using cocaine. Doesn't mean it's okay to vape. And by the way, 
they've shown that kids who vape are more likely to start kids who vape nicotine are more likely to start vaping THC and then you know as I said we don't go into but then it, it can spiral so um it's the other way too kids or we know that people who have had who have addictions to harder substances started with nicotine so yeah. uh, it, it's it's yeah. a it's a great starter kit because it wires the brain for addiction and um and that's that's really the big issue for youth um you know until right. your brain is 20, 24 25 your brain is still developing and open right. to addiction. the dopamine reward pathway so that then you need more and more to attain that pleasurable sensation so you're vaping more and more but then you need something else so yeah i mean sure if it's um if it's a one you never see i guess that's the thing is you never know so sure it's better than using cocaine or 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 heroin but the earlier you start using any substance the more likely you are to continue on to using other substances and the fact that kids are starting to vape these days at nine and ten years old shows us that those kids are going to go on likely to be using other substances unless we help them stop so um it's yeah, I mean kind of a silly comment um you know and i i feel for this addiction um prevention person because you know they're trying to create a a, a lifetime of of health and happiness for for these children and you know same with smoking cigarettes smoking cigarettes wasn't um nothing you know we became so used to it because it was normalized by society because the tobacco industry had created such a norm with cigarettes while well, the vaping industry is trying to do the same thing but you know what as pulmonologists around the country addiction psychiatrists around the country tell us nothing should go into your lungs except air nothing yeah, the yeah health and as you mentioned earlier there's so much that we still need to study like we're just starting to study this like we have a lot more to learn All right we don't know what it's going to do to your lungs later on and we do know that some kids have severe allergic reactions and others don't and we don't know why so there is a lot to learn yes ma'am yes um do you have any thoughts on what might be the biggest difference relation to damage to the body um, comparing nicotine to e-cigs today You mean cigarettes? that's one of those things like yeah one thing we're still determining too yes but a parent asked if you just have any like not overall medical opinion but just your general like what you're hearing what your sense might be with that I, mean, I think it's still too young to tell i mean you know the stat we hear about cigarettes is it kills half the people that use it so um we you know that took decades to to learn right so um what scientists and doctors are telling us now about their findings about the east you know the detriments of e-cigarettes um are are young and what we're hearing is negative but we're also the more we hear the more negative we hear we're about to uh we, we've heard a, a recent study that that hopefully will come out soon that is um very damaging about lung development as well um, or long harm I should say um, but you know we just we don't really compare cigarettes to e-cigarettes in the sense that is one better than the other um, you know as, as someone said it was like it's like if cigarettes are jumping off a five-story building maybe e-cigarettes are jumping off a three-story building you're still gonna get really hurt and you might die but you know we won't know that right um, so I think that what what we know the data we know is not good in terms of youth and again we don't talk about adults we're really talking about youth because their bodies are still growing and developing and the damage that you do is irreversible in that growth very often right i think it's really important um what mimi said is we are focused on kids one thing i will say is that um FDA and others have said that there are fewer known carcinogens in e-cigarettes than there are in cigarettes. But again, the data is still coming out. So e-cigarettes don't have tar, which we know will cause lung cancer, but it does have other chemicals. We know that it hurts the heart. So do e-cigarettes hurt the heart more than cigarettes? I mean, we're really splitting hairs. And I think mm -hmm. at a certain point, um, we are going to know the truth, but for now, I think every every 
month every year we're, we're discovering new the new dangers. So I will say about e-cigarettes is that they are easier to use more often because there's no social stigma, they don't smell, um, kids can hide them from their parents. Um, you know, right there, it makes it easier. That's so true. And we're being told kids are going through these, you know, like nothing because they don't even know there's no regulation. So you can look in a pack of cigarettes and say, mm -hmm. I used three cigarettes today. You can't know how much nicotine you've inhaled and chemicals until it's gone. And then that's three cigarettes, two packs, three, three packs, four packs, whatever it is in that vape. So there's no regulation on it. Yeah, and you were sharing with us too, and you probably said this, um, I was monitoring questions during the presentation, you probably said it, but um, that kids are waking up in the middle of the night and taking a hit off the vape and then like going back to sleep. And then the other thing you were sharing, and I've heard this in three places just this week, that um, often we'll hear from parents, like I don't have to start thinking about that till middle school. But yeah. we've heard like several times this week alone that there are second graders that are beginning to vape. Yeah. By the way, um, if I can say, if anyone um, does know of, you know, elementary school kids who are vaping, I mean, this is a really serious issue. And we're trying to compile as much empirical data as possible because we want to, to sound the alarm. I mean, I think this is really important. You know, if you have any information, anyone can email us anything anyway at info at parentsagainstvaping.org. But, you know, very often we'll, we heard from teachers who say that first graders will come in, kindergartners will come in, either they've stolen it from their parents or an older sibling, or another kid has and they pass it around, or they're in a mm -hmm. school that has high school and they'll find it in the bathroom or they'll find it on the floor. I mean, again, it's not that this little, you know, eight-year-old or seven-year-old is going to a store to buy it, but they are so available and so accessible, and they're just lying everywhere, um, on the street everywhere that kids are picking them up. So we really want to figure out how this is happening and why, because I think in order to stop it, we need as much information as we can get. And if I might just go back to um, to one thing that I, I think that if people really want to hear firsthand um, the impact that e-cigarettes have had on youth's lives, we actually, we recently finished our Clear the Vapor conference. It's a one-day conference. And as part of it, we had a youth panel and from the mouth of babes. I mean, these are now are young adults who started vaping in middle and high school. And you can hear their stories and their struggles. And they speak very openly and honestly about what's been going on. And some have quit, some have not been able to. But I think it's a really powerful way to, to understand firsthand what, what kids are going through. Good point. We have a teacher in the audience that's asking about um, curriculum recommendations. I know that you mentioned you recommend several on your website. Uh, and she says she only has students for one quarter and she's got to educate them on a lot of issues. Um, so what is your your most powerful, the powerful punch to give her uh, well, for that little time that she has on vaping? Yep. So um, as far as school curriculum goes, um, the Stanford Tobacco Prevention Toolkit, they have an amazing resource for schools. Um, it's, there's a, an alternative to suspension school curriculum, but there's also class lessons. And it's like a menu. It's like a menu where you can choose a little here, a little there. If you have a long full year, you can choose it all. If you only have a few months, you can just choose a few points. Um, the professor, Dr. Bonnie Halpern Felsher, who has created it, was one of our first partners. And she is open and accessible and it's free. And she, um, it's She's amazing. amazing. Mm -hmm. and, amazing. Mm -hmm. and you can really pick and choose. If you have a week, you can have just like three lessons for a week. So it's a really great resource. It's the Stanford Tobacco Prevention Toolkit. And now they have one on cannabis too. So that's right. really. Okay, um, someone mentioned Know the Truth and Aspire curriculums. Um, are you familiar with either of those by chance or? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Vaping Know the Truth is also very effective. I mean, I think what's great about these is that they're super easy to use and they're very informative. They're all, uh, this is, they're evidence-based. Uh, Truth Initiative does, everything they do is evidence-based, which is really helpful. Um, so you know you can trust it. So that right. is also recommended. 
and they're the ones who have the text to quit app um the truth initiative so you have the curriculum and then you have the text to quit app and then you have the parent portion of the text to quit so that's all encompassing i mean so that's a wonderful um resource as well i'm not sure how you can carve it up if you can carve it up into a very small um portion for a week or two that i'm not sure about but it's an amazing resource that's awesome uh, one parent made a really good point that their school does offer a um, education curriculum for any student who is uh, caught vaping at school, but it's not mandatory. And so I thought, you know, that's one more thing we could think about what talking to our schools about is like, let's, if we're gonna be restorative and do the wraparound, uh, that, that we're finding that to be better, then perhaps that does need to be a mandatory part of the uh, plan. Yeah, no, I think it should. What One thing that's actually fascinating that we hear from schools is very often it's mandatory for the kids, but not the parents. Or even if it's mandatory for the parents, the parents put up more resistance than the kids do. So very often the kids are like, oh, like we, we talked to this one principal who said, you know, I caught this kid vaping and he broke down and he said, I'm so glad you caught me. I didn't know how to quit. I didn't know who to talk to. Will you please help me? So that was wonderful because he finally found the resource and the help he needed. But parents will say, I don't want to go in. What do I need to? Look? So so it's 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 so interesting, I think. Yeah, we're For urging sure. to do this, right? To to listen to something like this where, you know, uh, just to understand because I think parents are a little bit in the dark. We heard of a mm -hmm. story of a parent giving their third grader a vape to help them calm down. And I mean, it's just heartbreaking because they don't understand the health harms. I'm sure they wouldn't do it if they thought it was harmful. They just don't know. Right. Well, the beautiful thing about today is we have about 700 people plus here with us. Uh, so that's hopeful and, and amazing, right? Um, let's see here. I'm gonna get in one more question. Oh, um, in terms of quitting, we know that there needs to be a lot of uh, more done to help youth quit. And there are good resources out there, but a parent was saying, so what kind of specialist should I see first um, to help with quitting? Is that the pediatrician? Is that, um, you know, what do you recommend there? I think, I mean, I think, you know, I think you should always start with your pediatrician. As Mimi said, the American Academy of Pediatrics has started to recommend NRTs, that is nicotine replacement therapy, which is the patch and the nicotine gum. And if you have a smaller child, then maybe they'll titrate it and make it a smaller portion. But my son, when he was 16 and he was vaping, he, his doctor put him on the nicotine patch and then he had the gum for cravings and you um you you step down so you start with the 14 gram and then you go to set and like you step down so that was helpful for him we have other families whose kids are extremely addicted and that's not enough so they'll use the um the equivalent of Ch of chant chantix which is for smoking but um but again, that you have to be working with an addiction psychiatrist, maybe. You need to be working with a doctor. Um, we work with um, the Duke University School of Medicine, and that's they have these amazing um, resources and these amazing doctors. That's something they do. They also do um, cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, which is also helpful for, um, you know, to help the child figure out what to do when they're in a difficult situation or what to do when they have a craving. So it helps to combine any nicotine replacement therapy or any medication with, um, you know, with therapy. Very often you hear that, you know, sometimes they'll put the kids on, my son, you know, would go on um, an antidepressant because the, 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 it, it just, the depression, the drop, because you're not getting that, the nicotine, you're not getting, um, the dopamine rush or Wellbutrin, which is also for quitting smoking, but it also helps even out the, the, the blood chemicals, the chemistry of the brain. You really have to go to a specialist. So whether it's a, a therapist, a psychiatrist, but I would always say start with your pediatrician, Mimi, don't you think? I agree. I agree. I mean, it used to be a number of years ago that 
pediatricians did not know how to handle it and they were a bit in denial. Uh, but now I think many, many do understand it. Um, and if you're having trouble, reach out to us and we'll try and help. But generally start with your local pediatrician <clears throat> or if they're a little bit older, you might even seek uh, a, a, you know, a young adult doctor um, who can help. I think the you key can. is not to self-medicate, not to try to use those patches, uh, yes. the, uh, the you know, Lucy gum and all of that, because that's not the right kind of treatment. It's not the right nicotine. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, you know, being patient, giving it a lot of time, you're going to have to try a lot of different things. Every child is different. We know in our own homes, each child is, is different. So you've given us just so many things and resources to um, think about, be more aware, be more vigilant in our own homes. Um, I always say, like, if you, if you as a parent feel like something is off with your child, trust it and invest, you know, investigate, take charge, look around, um, you know, their health is on the line with this issue. Like we, we really can't wait. Like it's, um, it's critical yeah. that we move health. and we know more. Their physical health, but also their mental health, I think is we really have to protect them. Yes. Yes. Cause you asked that gift question, like, you know, why would they start to vape anyways? could be peer pressure, but could also be other pressures, other anxiety, depression. Yeah, you made a beautiful point about what our youth are, are up against today. So I'm glad we were able to partner and um, help families have current, hot off the press uh, information about vaping, as well as uh, some action steps to go uh, home tonight and, and talk about it with their youth and, and share, share things. And it's not just gonna be one conversation. Uh, it's going to be a great time to open the conversation to say, you know, I heard this really yes. informative talk today. I'd love to talk to you about it. What do you know? You know, what are you seeing? Just open the door and ask some questions, you know, um, are your, you know, are your friends doing it? It's like, what's happening at parties? You know, like what's, I'd love to know. And I really want to open that conversation with you because it's really concerning the things that I heard today. That's right. That's right. Let's uh, let's just keep going, keep talking. And I'm so proud of the work that you guys are doing out of New York, but it's trickling all Thank across you. the United States. It's not even trickling. It's outpouring. It's um, it's taken over. So I'm so thankful for what you're doing and what you're making families aware of and the difference uh, we that feel you're making. You guys, I'm so, we're so glad that we met you all and um, have uh, now understand all the resources that you all provide. So thank you. Yeah, did I will look forward to next time and we, we sure appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks all. Bye.